My name is Scott Mitchell. I'm the director here at the Silver River Museum, which is located in the Silver Spring State Park, just a short distance from the Ocklawaha River. We have a tremendous amount of fossils and artifacts and historic items here in the Silver River Museum from the Ocklawaha River, which has a fascinating history uh, that spans at least 15,000 years of humans traveling up and down the river, living along the river, uh, and really calling the Okalaha River home. So the earliest evidence we have are from prehistoric Paleo-Indians, meaning the oldest Native Americans that we have evidence of, Paleo meaning very, very old. Uh, these Paleo people lived along the Okalaha during the end of the Ice Age. And uh, we believe this from radiocarbon dates from other sites in Florida that put the um, Paleo-Indian occupation in Florida about 14, 15,000 years ago, maybe earlier. They left behind stone artifacts, primarily spear points. Uh, some carved ivory implements have been found um, in Florida, North Florida rivers. Um, and you can only carve ivory when it's fresh. So they would get ivory from mammoths and mastodons, carve it into implements. Um, and that tells us that they were here at the same time as that Ice Age megafauna like the mammoths, the mastodons, saber-toothed cats, giant ground sloths, things like that. Um, we have uh, evidence of butchering on fossil bone as well. So this is very good evidence that people were living along the Okawaha as early as 14, 15,000 years ago. Now those folks didn't leave and new Indians moved in. When the environment changed, the Ice Age ended, things warmed up, the culture changed, and by the time the arrival of the uh, Spaniards in the 1500s, the Native Americans had developed into what we refer to as the Tumuquin speaking people. The Tumuquin Indians lived along the Okawaha as well in villages, and they were a little more sedentary. They weren't nomadic hunter-gatherers like the Paleo Indians. So these were the folks that were living in villages, forming, farming corn, fishing, uh, hunting and gathering, that the early Spanish explorers that came through Marion County in the mid-1500s encountered. Later in the early 1600s, the Spanish Franciscan priests came and built three Spanish missions along the Okawaha River. And we actually have a wonderful uh, Spanish church bell, a bronze mission bell from San Blas de Avino, which was the earliest Spanish mission. It operated from 1609 to 1620. The bell was found by Ben Waller, who was a gentleman who was a river diver in the 60s. He found this bell and it ended up here at the museum. We're lucky to have it. Um, Later, after the Spanish um, mission system collapsed, most of the Native Americans, the indigenous uh, people of North Florida were, were gone from epidemics and warfare. And so by the 1700s, you have Creek Indians moving into Florida from Alabama and Georgia. You also get slaves, African-American slaves that are escaping from the colonies, the British colonies to the north, and later the states, they're coming to Florida. And you have some remnants of leftover indigenous Tumuqua and Appalachian people. Those three groups, the Creek, the escaped slaves, and the leftover Florida indigenous Indians, they gave rise to Seminole and Miccosukee culture. Uh, now, the Seminole had wonderful towns in this part of the state. Uh, we know that they were using Nakawaha to travel, but by the mid-1800s, they had been pushed south or removed. Um, and they were actually pushed out of this part of Florida down south into the Everglades. When the Civil War started, there were very few whites, if you will, living along the Okalaha River. Um, and during the Civil War, there were some plantations, some sugar plantations. The only time we had Union troops come into Marion County uh, was at the end of the Civil War in 1865, and these were uh, referred to as U.S. colored troops. These were African-American federal troops that came down from Jacksonville, and they raided two plantations along the Okalaha River, the Holly and Marshall plantations. They also burned the river crossing, which we believe was a ferry at that time. I don't think it was a bridge. And then they had a running gun battle back up to uh, St. Augustine where they took refuge. But that was significant because they were African-American troops in the heart of the Confederacy. And it was the only time we had federal troops in Marion County. It was one of our only um, Civil War skirmishes, if you will. After the Civil War, uh, the steamboat um, period took off and uh, there was a man named Hart who got a contract from the U.S. government to deliver mail and to keep the Okalaha River free of snags. 
and he realized very quickly that people would pay to ride his mail boats up and down the river to all these different riverboat landings where there were small farming communities. And Hart developed uh, a steamboat line which ran from the 1860s up to the 1920s. That riverboat era was really a time when people were coming from Jacksonville down to Palatka, all the way up the Okalaha as far south as Okehunkee into the chain of lakes. And they would make side trips off onto the Silver River up to Silver Springs. They were bringing cargo and mail and tourists and relatives. And there were dozens of riverboat landings all along the Okalaha River. You can think of them as bus stops, if you will. By the 1920s, the riverboats were obsolete, and two gentlemen with the last names of Ray and Davidson bought Silver Springs and turned it into a tourist attraction. And Silver Springs was one of the largest, most visited tourist attractions east of the Mississippi. It was comparable to Niagara Falls. And anyone who came to Florida would go to Silver Springs from the 20s, I would say, up until into the, well into the 70s. Ray and Davidson eventually sold Silver Springs. It went through a series of corporate owners, and then finally, about five or six years ago, ended up as part of Silver Springs State Park. And now we're lucky to have 5,000 acres uh, of state park with the Okmawaha River as our eastern boundary. And the Okmawaha River is still a wonderful artery that runs through north central Florida um, that provides people with recreation, camping, paddling, fishing, uh, wildlife viewing opportunities, uh, and it's still a, a beautiful resource. So that's 15,000 years of history and prehistory of the Okmawaha River. Uh, you can come to the Silver River Museum on weekends and see these items for yourself if you're interested.